In the next five minutes, you're going to learn how to use the five best tools to completely transform the look of landscapes. And any questions you've got, of course, ask them after the video is finished. And if you're not there yet, hit subscribe. It'd be great to have you on the channel. So we're going to look at the five main tools which can completely transform the look of your photo. Without further ado, let's jump right in. So the first one is Sky AI. Let's click on that. And then you want to go into Sky Selection because this is going to give you a massive selection of skies to choose from. I'm going to go ahead and click on this one here. And then this is going to change the sky that you've got and replace it with this one. Now, when the sky is in here, you'll be able to see that it doesn't quite match the rest of the scene. So the other settings inside this tool are going to help us to match that up. Sky orientation can actually change it vertically or horizontally if you want to move the sky around to get a certain part of the sky showing in your photo. Now, I think that that's just about perfect, so we're going to keep it there. Next up, you've got mask refinement. If you've got really tricky masks that you're trying to deal with, like things through a tree and branches, then you can use these settings to kind of dial them in and just fix the mask and make it look even better. Now, we've got no issues with this mask, so we're going to move straight on to scenery lighting. This is a really important setting. If you push this up, it's going to relight your scene so it fits in with the sky. And this is going to make it look more natural and more realistic. Then you can push up the relight saturation, and that's going to make the colour look even more realistic too. Finally, if you've got humans in your scene, push that up and they'll match as well. Brilliant. Next up, we've got reflection, and this is where that you can actually make a reflection in the water. Well done, Luminar AI. If I push that right up, you can see I've got this beautiful reflection from the clouds in the water. And for all of you landscape photographers, you'll love this. Long exposure, just add a water blur. Fantastic. Finally, you've got sky adjustments. You can make some adjustments to the sky here, including making it look more blurred. You can add atmospheric haze if you want to, and you can add warmth and things like that to just increase the look of the sunset or sunrise if you're going for that look. Finally, brightness. That can make the scene brighter if you want to do that as well. Next up, we're looking at augmented sky. Let's click into this. You can add objects into your sky, which is pretty crazy, don't you think? Now, you can add things like birds, eagles, these, I can't think what the name of them is right now, mountains, aeroplanes, anything you can think of, you can add into your sky. I don't use this much, but you've got this if you want to go for that composite look. Let's add some birds in, and then these will go into the sky, as you'll see in a minute. And when they do, they're probably going to look a little bit too big. So you've got an actual option here to change these and place object. This is going to give you a box around where we can make the birds smaller and then just make them look more in the distance so they actually look more realistic in the photo. You can then change the warmth of these so that they can match, they can look a little bit warmer if you want and you can relight them so they fit with the scene as well. Really good. Finally, you've got mask refinement. Now, I don't know why you'd need to refine the mask here because it's already been done. And finally, you've got defocus. If you've got a blurred sky, you can just defocus these birds so they match with a blurred sky. Next up, we've got atmosphere. This is a beautiful thing to do when you've got a bit of water in your scene like this, a lake. You can add in things like fog, layered fog, mist or haze. Now, let's just go for layered fog push the amount up here, which is going to add more layered fog in, and then the depth, which is going to add that closer, as you can see, across the water towards the front of the photo. And this is give it a beautiful morning misty look now, which I think is just beautiful. Finally, you can change the lightness and make it darker or lighter, depending on your requirements. Next up is sun rays. This is brilliant. You can add a sun into the sky. So let's choose where we want to add the sun. You click on play sun center. You can grab that there and then you can put it somewhere. Now I'm going to put it over here. So it's probably creeping over the top of the mountain. When you've done that, just add your amount in so you can see how much the sun is coming in. You've got these beautiful rays coming over and it's creating this gorgeous look. You can actually change the overall look by pushing the slider up and down, and you can even change the length of the sun rays. So if you want them all the way across your image, you can do that. Or if you want them closer towards the mountain, you can do that too. Finally, penetration is really awesome because you can bring that so it's creeped back over the mountain and it's hiding behind, or you can actually push it all the way up so it's actually showing like it's coming over the mountain and lighting up the water here, which is a really nice touch. Now you've got amount of sun rays, so you can make this look, look really full on, or you could bring it back and dial it back here and have less sun rays, which I quite like. You can randomize these if you want, 
but I actually think you can just leave them like this. And then you can add how warm you want the sun. So it matches in with this beautiful warm sky over here. And finally, how warm you want the rays as well. The last tool that we're going to look at here is the toning tool. This is where you can change the overall color and tone it in the image. And this is just the finishing touch. So the amount here is obviously the amount of color that you want in. And then you've got the saturation and you can change these in your shadows and highlights as well. So if I push the saturation up to about there, then I choose to change the U to like a golden color. Then you can see that I've give this beautiful golden look into the shadows. I can then do this for the highlights as well, push up my saturation a little bit, add in that nice golden color here, and then just change the amount if I want to make it look even more. Guys, this is probably run over five minutes. I don't actually know, but hopefully this has been really helpful that you can actually get to grips with these tools now. If this was a bit quick for you, don't worry. Just press pause on the parts and then practice it at your own time. And if you have enjoyed this, please hit the like button and the subscribe button as well. Also, guys, Luminar currently have a really cool little offer on where if you actually own this software, you can actually go ahead and buy Luminar Neo at about half the price or 60% off, which is a big saving. This is kind of a way of saying thank you to all the Luminar owners which are currently out there. I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, make sure it's a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.